battle against COVID-19 in his new book, American Crisis. And he joins us now from Albany. Governor Cuomo, thank you very much for talking with us. Uh, I think my first question is, how in the world did you find time to write the book in the middle of a pandemic? You're overseeing 20 million people in your state, uh, uh, trying to make sure uh, people stay as healthy as possible, uh, in addition to all your other responsibilities. Uh, thank you, Judy. Uh, it was in part therapeutic for me, and uh, in part, it was what I was doing every day. I was doing daily briefings for the people of the state, uh, which were televised. And the book is basically a compendium of those daily briefings, uh, then with some context and retrospective. You you did get a lot of praise, Governor, early on. You were you did hold those daily briefings. Uh, people noticed that. Um, you you go into a lot of detail in the book, and you also talk about the federal government, President Trump, his administration. How much responsibility does he does his administration bear for where this country is today? Oh, Judy, I would say uh, total responsibility. I was a former uh, federal employee. I was a cabinet secretary under the Clinton administration. I was secretary, secretary of Housing and Urban Development. This was a national pandemic. This was a federal crisis. Uh, normally, the federal government would take charge. Uh, this situation where you have a national pandemic, but then you delegate to 50 states to do their own strategy when it's a virus that goes from border to border. All 50 states have to find their own PPE. All 50 states have to find their own testing. Uh, all 50 states have to organize their own emergency operations. That's not how that, this should have been done. It should have been done on a nationwide level. Plenty of criticism to be directed uh, toward Washington, Governor. But as you know, uh, you've received criticism as well, um, including uh, about the handling of nursing homes. We know that there was a point in, in March when you directed uh, individuals who elderly who'd been uh, diagnosed with COVID or showed symptoms to go to nursing homes. Later, uh, we know that some 6,600 people died in New York nursing homes. That makes up about a quarter of all the deaths in the state. I know that studies show that there are multiple factors at work here, but how much responsibility do you think you bear for what happened in the nursing homes? Uh, well, first, I take total responsibility for everything that happened in the state of New York, uh, whether it's in a nursing home or it's the essential workers. Uh, I believe if you're in charge, you're in, tra in charge, Judy. Uh, but we have to separate the political propaganda from the facts, right? The White House has been very good at blaming Democratic governors for deaths in nursing homes. And it's not just New York. It's New Jersey. It's all across the country. Um, and people, tragically, did die in nursing homes. Uh, but remember, this is a virus that attacked the elderly and the weak. We were introduced to this virus in the state of Washington, where there were nursing home deaths. Uh, we never directed uh, any COVID person to go to a nursing home. That never happened. We followed federal guidance that said you can't discriminate against a COVID person. Uh, but we never directed a nursing home to take anyone. As a matter of fact, it's the exact opposite. In the state of New York, by law, a nursing home cannot accept someone unless they can properly care for that person within their facility. Uh, and the fact is, of the deaths in New York, we are number 46 out of 50 states in the percentage of deaths in nursing homes. 46 out of 50. So uh, we did not have a disproportionate number of deaths in nursing homes. Well, we know, as I said, we, I, there are studies that show there were multiple factors, but one of them was uh, the, the, the way that it was read by people who, who run the nursing homes uh, and people who make decisions about where people would go, that they should go into nursing homes based on what you and your administration said. Governor, just today it is reported uh, that uh, uh, you are telling local governments in these uh, hard-hit so-called COVID uh, cluster zones that they're going to lose state money unless they strictly enforce uh, COVID rules around uh, schools and whether they're open or not, uh, size of gatherings. 
are you serious about withholding money if if these local governments don't do as as you're saying they should? Yeah, I am serious about protecting the people of New York, Judy. Uh, we have now New York State does more testing than any state in the nation. Our statewide numbers are very good. We're at about one percent infection rate, which is still the lowest in the country. But we do so much testing that we can target what we call micro clusters, which are very small uh, aggregate number of cases. And we can target it to geographic areas that are only about one or two square miles. In those areas, uh, we've taken additional restrictions. One of them is we've closed schools in those areas, uh, those quote unquote micro clusters. Uh, some of the schools are still open, even though they've been ordered closed. Uh, and this has been going on for a number of days. Uh, I don't want to risk any child's health uh, in going to a school in an area we know ha that has a high infection rate. The local governments are supposed to be doing the enforcement. Uh, politically, uh, it's, it's not really popular for a local government to insist that the schools be closed. But that is the state law. It does protect children. It does protect parents. And the local governments uh, need to do it. And what we've said is, if the local governments won't enforce the law, then there'll be monetary sanctions. Governor, let's turn quickly uh, to, to election. The election, it's coming up in just a little over two weeks. Um, you're somebody who's watched American politics for a long time. Do you think Joe Biden is in as strong shape as most of these national polls are showing he is? No. Uh, no, this is a different type of election year. I wouldn't believe the polls. Uh, I do believe Joe Biden is in a strong position. I don't know that it's as strong as the polls would suggest. Uh, and I think President Trump is, frankly, uh, in a weaker position uh, than most people uh, would, would guess, because the American people have watched the president. Uh, they've watched all the antics. They've watched how he's handled this COVID situation for seven months. They've watched how he's handled it now. Uh, but... but uh, you know, the president is treacherous in his own way. Uh, and do I think there could be a situation where he actually loses the election, claims that there's fraud, which he has been claiming for weeks now, uh, and pushes the matter to the courts and tries to get the matter to the Supreme Court, uh, and is successful in confirming his nominee? I could see that situation. So uh, I don't think I don't think it's time uh, uh, to relax for those people who are Joe Biden supporters, such as myself. Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York, the book is American Crisis Leadership Le Lessons from the COVID-19 Pandemic. Governor, thank you. Thank you, Judy.